So there we go. <laughs> another big trip in the books and another adventure badge on the KLR 650, the Silver Fox. So for those of you who are uninitiated or don't really know, every year we go on a big trip like this. And this year's trip was, you know, up through the Annapolis Valley, down through the South Shore, in search of the story of the UFO incident at Shag Harbor. Plus, we, we did a lot of other stories on this trip too. But what that gets us is not only a really good adventure, but it gives us some awesome stories to tell. And one of the ways I like to represent that, and some of the way, one of the ways I like to, you know, kind of embody it a little bit on the motorcycle, is to have an adventure badge. And that's what we have here. I've called this the secret badge. <laughs> <clears throat> as we were looking in our in name of the adventures harboring the secrets so that's why i chose it but for me you know whenever i look at the motorcycle whenever i look at the klr 650 and i see the blackwood badge or i see the witch's river badge and then i see this one it always brings back those awesome memories of me and brandon out there in the unknown just kind of like spending our days on the motorcycle and it just it's it's really cool and i think another big thing i take away from that is that Every year I try to have like that mission, right? <laughs> and it's, it seems kind of hokey a little bit, you know, to have some sort of one guiding mission on the, on the trip, but I really like it. Because not only does it force me into an adventure, but it gives me something to strive towards and it gives me something to take back. And this year I really wanted to confirm one thing. With the theme of, the, of season three overall being like harbors, right? My goal was to look at harbor communities. And I feel like there was some sort of linkage between what exists in small harbor town communities and what exists here with us at Island ADV. And like I said a million times that I really feel like our subscribership is like a ride group and we all go out on Mondays and we go on a ride together basically. So that's what I, I wanted to confirm a little bit. And I think I already knew, but a nice small community like ours is resilient. We lean on each other and in the comments we provide advice to each other and we're always looking out for each other we're going on rides together and it's such a great great thing and the communities that we saw all along in nova scotia you know they were communities that overcome adversity adversity there were communities that were resilient and there were communities that really pushed the boundaries of things that you could do back in the day and you know maybe come up with some brand new stuff like we saw in electric city man wasn't that the best part by the way this is a channel update video <laughs> I usually explain what a channel update video is every every month when I do them, but I haven't been doing them every month. It's been a couple months since I did this one, and you know I've just been like ridiculously busy. Been working on uh, work 2.0 pretty much every single weekend since January. Same with Brandon. We've both been on the same kind of like army contract kind of sort of thing, and we've been just doing it just to make some extra cash and just to commit a little bit more to army stuff in general. But. Uh, yeah, every, at the end of every month, usually, <laughs> I do a channel update, and that gives me an opportunity to connect the timelines a little bit, because as you know, I film my videos way, way far in advance, so it gets to the point where sometimes you're watching me in the summer, and but we're all sitting here in the bleakness of winter, and it's been a rough winter, man, as far as bleakness is concerned. I just, it's been so cold outside, and it's been so dark and dreary, it's, it's been a good one to stay humble and stay, you know, bundled up inside a little bit. But we're almost through it. You know, can you believe it's March? Holy smokes. That's, that's, that shocks me a little bit. That's why I love this series, right? It, it helps us get through the doldrums of the wintertime. So back to this badge. Say you want to get one. Well, you're totally allowed to. Absolutely. You don't have to actually go ride with us physically, you know, on the road with us out through Nova Scotia to earn yourself the secret badge. Well, what you can do, there's a few different ways you can get it. Uh, these here came from Redbubble. I have a link in the description of this channel that'll take you to a place where you can buy merchandise if, you, if you're interested in doing that. But also you have all of the adventure badges there. They're all available. I've tried to drive the price down as, as much as I can um, just to make it a little bit easier to get that so you can get that there. Um, if we're riding around town here locally on Prince Edward Island, I usually have extras around here and I'll just give you one. Um, if we're kind of like local a bit, um, but also there should be a link in the description here too that you can use and you can find a high, um, high quality uh, vector image of it. And you can take that to a print shop and you can just ask them, can I get a waterproof, you know, sticker of this, you know, die cut. And what I mean by die cut is like, here, let me just rip this one a little bit. It means that like, you see, like it's going to be cut out to the shape. So I ask for die cut that usually helps too. And if they, they look at you and they say, hey, are you, are you allowed to print this? Well, you can just take them to this video where I will say, yes, yes, they're allowed to print this. <laughs> 
so yeah, if you're if you want to get a, a you know one of the adventure badge for this year, you know, go for it. You know, if you've been watching the episodes, if you've been following along on our adventure this year, you, you've earned it. As far as I'm concerned, like again, we're a big ride group, so definitely do that if you're interested. Um, what else is there to go over? Yeah, I got a lot of stuff that I've been not doing uh, <laughs> this off season. Normally I've been just doing a lot of, I do a lot of maintenance and I do a lot of tinkering around with the bike, but I've pretty much gone through the majority of the mods that I really want to do to the bike. I, I'm kind of disappointed because I really wanted to redo the suspension in the front forks and in the rear of the bike, but it just wasn't something that I could get done this year. Money is like, you know, was tight after Fiona having to buy a bunch of stuff to just kind of recover from that whole disaster is just crazy plus you know i'm just working all the time so i think this this weekend coming this weekend actually since it's probably friday if you're watching this day of release is uh, like my last weekend that i'm going to be working so i'll have some time off to kind of catch up on things and in order to do that i've been making my list i'm going through the the climber manual here things that i want to do i got a big list somewhere here yeah there of maintenance things that I want to do and like I'm getting some parts coming through here too I'm just kind of building up the parts stockpile I got oh this is cool I'll show you that uh, I just got this this is like a front wheel bearing kit I don't know if I need them but I now have a front oh come here and a front and a rear wheel bearing kit now so covered don't need to worry about that Mitch the man down at Bolger Motorsports he's got a whole pile of parts for me not really a pile but a bunch of them but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the, uh, the front rear sprockets and put a new chain on the bike. Um, I actually go through a lot of sprockets on the KLR. I think it's a combination of me just ripping hard on the bike all the time. I don't know what it is with me. <laughs> Whenever I start from a stop, I can't just gingerly move on. I have to like give her because I don't know. I love the, I love the sound of the engine. But, you know, this was the first sprocket here that I had on the camera. And uh, you can kind of see, if I get some paper, I'll show you the contrast. You can see how much it wore out. So if you're, if you got a KLR 650 and you're on your, still on your front sprocket, that's cool. Uh, you can get an idea of kind of what it looks like there. You can see how like, you know, thinned out it was. So what I found, I put one of these on the bike right before the trip. This is a Sunstar steel, 15 tooth front sprocket and it is a meaty old thing it is really good the one i've got on there right now has barely any wear i'm going to switch it anyway because whenever i do the chain i do all the sprockets but it's really good it's an excellent little sprocket um, it fits in and uh, it just i love it so if you're looking for a sprocket on your front end and you want to try something new um, that sunstar one just yellow like that you can get it on fortnite it's really good i recommend it for sure but yeah, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to change the, do the chain, do the, uh, do the front and rear sprockets. And away I'll go. After that, I've got another thing I want to do too. Um, sorry, this is kind of like a tool, you know, tool bench talk episode, but there's just, there's actually a lot of stuff I want to get cut up on. Another thing I want to do is I have a really bad pop on the front end on D cell of the KLR 650. So you're, you know, gearing down ball and that psh, like that is what it sounds like. It's not a pop at the exhaust. We know what that sounds like. That's common to KLRs, right? It happens all the time, but it's like a psh. So what I think it is, pretty sure it is, it's where the uh, exhaust connects to the header. There's a gasket, crush gasket. So I'm going to replace that. Oh, I might try tightening it down first. I'll tighten it to torque. We'll see if that fixes if it doesn't. I might have a, a blown gasket there, so we'll just replace that. Mitch has got one for me again. Mitch always comes through, man. Thank you so much if you're watching this. You always got my back with the parts down there, man. It's just so great. Ah, all right. What else is, oh man, yes, this is the best part right here. Look at these. This is, pro this is such a wonderful gift. Uh, Island Rider Lou from WV ADV. Uh, he sent these along through the mail and these are just a beautiful set of, of woolly bugger patterns and a nymph pattern fly. Oh, look at those, eh? Look at the detail on the Prince Nymph at the top. The wings, excellent. Well done. I love the bead. The gold bead works so well here on Prince Edward Island. And this black leech bugger that you have here is a very, very good pattern. 
but the one I'm, we're interested in, and I say we because you'll notice, Lou, if you're watching this, uh, there's only half of them here. <laughs> I gave the other half to my buddy Morgan. He really, really loved, really, really loved this hex bugger here. So we're going to try that one right off, see how it does. So, Lou, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this gift. This is a, an amazing gift to receive. The craftsmanship, the time that it takes to put into fly tying, I know what it is. It, you, it's a labor of love, and the, I, uh, I'll make sure that I, I get you something back your way. <laughs> I'm putting something together here for you, and hopefully eventually it'll make its way through the mail and get your way to you. But thank you so much. Folks, if you want to check out a little bit of Lou, he's a fellow KLR 650 rider, and he's got his uh, YouTube channel there. I'll leave a link at the top. Just got a couple of videos, you know. He's just like me, you know, hobby YouTubist. <laughs> YouTuber, I should say. YouTubist. Is that a thing? Who knows? Anyway, let's get to the real channel update business. I'll tell you a little bit about what's coming down the pipe and what kind of videos you can expect to see over the next month, especially now that we have our big trip out of the way. It's time to get into the shoulder season. Now, I did say I didn't have too many awesome mods, but I did get a cool little one here. Look, I finally bought a quad lock. So the way this guy works, everybody knows how a quad lock works, but it just clips on just like that. Look at that. That's not coming off, but I just mounted it up to the, uh, the Chrono Parts dash like that. Real simple, real easy. It's on there with some, uh, some Loctite. I will say this, you gotta get a case for your phone and stuff for this. It's a little pricey actually. I think Canadian dollars, all taxes in and shipping is like 120 bucks for all of this. But it's, it's so worth it. Yeah, I think it is because man, I was just struggling so much on this last trip with that little mount that I had here. Just getting it on and getting it off, it was such a pain in the butt. So hopefully this will uh, reduce that pain. Yeah, so still lots of work left to do on the bike. So we're out, like I was telling you before with that little pop, that's coming like right from here, right at the uh, the head, the cylinder head, and the, where the exhaust connects there. So there's like a bracket and there's a couple bolts. So I've heard people just, you know, torque that down and it gets rid of it, but I want to get the crush washer anyway, one of those things. Plus, uh, I got to pull the carburetor out still and clean that up. Man, all the aluminum on the bike is just perma mud. I tried doing a deep clean this year, it didn't work out. So much mud on this bike. I don't know if I want to consider that a badge of honor. Being from Salisbury, I guess it kind of is. <laughs> I can consider that. Maybe that's the Salisbury in me coming through, but whatever. Uh, what else do I want to do? I want to check, um, of course, do the valves, I guess, too. Get an oil change in there. But you know what? It'll be time to ride again here in no time, really. And that, that's exciting. <laughs> For me, at least, like, incredibly exciting because... The start of a new season is just something I'm, I always look forward to. And I put a lot of effort into every season here at Island ADB. I try to have us like have a theme. And like I said, we always have like an adventure. And I'm starting like some new things this season too that I kind of liked from last season. So like we'll have like a mini series in the summer where we go away a little bit there, but not to the extent of the bigger series, but something a little bit. I'm, I'm still trying to nail what, down what I want to do for that though. I got part of me that just wants to go back into New Brunswick. Part of me wants to go back to Electric City. I, I really just want to do that, you know? It would be so cool just to grab a, bunch of, grab a bunch of folks and head down to Electric City and just have a party on a weekend. That's, <laughs> that's Salisbury talking again. But anyway, that's, that's something that I'm playing with. It's not something firm. Don't, don't put anything on your calendar for that yet. Who knows if it'll happen. But um, yeah, I really look forward to it. And I'm looking forward to a lot of the videos that are coming up on the channel for you folks too. Um, we're into the shoulder season now at Island ADV, it's something that's kind of manifested itself over the years of me doing this. Years actually, it's weird to say that in plural. But um, at the end of every big trip, it's all of the fall riding season. And the fall riding season was wild this year. Not only in the summer, but after Fiona hit, after the hurricane hit, the trails were just, they're wiped out. They're just crazy. So we've got some cool stuff coming up this month. We have a really, really awesome group ride in the summer, near the end of the summer. We had a, um, a big group ride, all the dual sport riders of PEI. There's a Facebook group, Micah, who you've seen on this channel a little bit earlier in this uh, season three. He put together a really awesome group ride that really tackled a lot of the great spots of riding like, you know, big inclines and stuff on Prince Edward Island. Plus we hit the Devil's Punch Bowl. Finally, we go to the Devil's Punch Bowl and we see what that's all about. And we bring Hugo along. Yes, that's right. Hugo is back for another couple quick episodes. So you get to see the enduro riding prowess of, uh, of Hugo there from Babinomoto. 
And uh, I, I believe he'll have a video of his own up there too that he'll post. So we'll do that same thing. We're like, I'll have a video on my channel. He'll have one on his. You'll see a couple different angles. It'll be fun. And then at the near the end of the month, we got another really cool two-part series coming up where Andy from Motos, Cades and Coffee, Just Motos, that's his new channel for just motorcycles and motorcycle content. He comes up on his northbound adventure. Now, Andy came from all the way from Maryland, the United States, and he came up here to visit us. So we... You know, we'll have those two videos and that's going to be a really cool one. It's nice to see him on the Parley Pan America hit some of that red dirt. We really get to see what that hulk of a machine can do in some of the stuff that we normally get up to and we get up to some muddy stuff. I mean, we don't go crazy, but we do go moto camping. So we have a little camp down at the beach and that was really fun too, up near Brackley Bay. That was such a great time too. Again, fond memories, you know, thinking back to the summer it was so good. Uh, and now, like I mentioned, what I'm kind of doing right now is just getting ready for uh, season four. You know, we're already planning the big trip. The big trip has been decided. We know where we're going. We know who's going. And if you're watching this and you know who you are, you got to keep tight lipped. Keep it on the down low. <laughs> you know, don't want to spoil it right off the top. But I'm excited for it. I'm so excited for it. I've been wanting to do this trip for a little while now. And uh, it's going to be cool really cool i think <laughs> we got a neat season four plan we got some other things for season five plan i'm planning so far in the distance actually you know what's funny me and mrs dowski are watching long way around for i'm watching it for like probably the fourth time she's watching it for the first time and she's loving it so much so that we're looking at bikes together now <laughs> do you believe it yeah i think the uh, the long-term goal is uh we're gonna get me and mrs dowski we're gonna get a touring bike for each other something really neat we haven't landed on the bike yet I'm going to go sit on some stuff and find out what's comfortable. It won't be this season, and maybe it'll be next season. Who knows? It's a ways off. But am I selling the KLR 650? Absolutely not. <laughs> a Silver Fox is like my brother. You know, I, 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 I can never part with him. So Silver Fox will be around forever. So don't, don't worry about that if you think of that. If you hear a new bike and you're worried about old bike going away, old bike doesn't go away. <laughs> but that's pretty much everything that I had to update from. You know, we've got a great month coming up. We've got a great shoulder season. You know, we're going to be doing some more moto camping. We're going to be doing some more group rides for sure. And we got another fishing trip planned for um, videos in April. So, yeah, there you go. But anyway, wherever you are, I hope you're being safe. I'm hoping you're having a great winter. And if you're longing for the, you know, the spring to come and for the time to get out there on the bikes again believe me it's so so close <laughs> it's so close now we're in march things are going to start warming up the roads are going to start having the dust cleared and the salt will go away so it'll be time to open up that garage and pull out those two wheels and get on there and have a good time but if you're out if you're not in your off season if you are riding please ride safe until the next time we chat until the next time we check up with each other take care island riders we'll see you on the road <laughs>